2018, we are clinical scholars with the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. We're the mobile health outreach working in Seattle, Washington, here to share our project with you today. I'm Colette Ness, the licensed veterinary technician. Hannah Ekstrom, veterinarian. Jessica Lowry, registered nurse. Hi, Katherine Wheeler, physician. We'd like to share our experience in the first year of our project. Let me tell you the story of Mac Daddy and his family. Mac Daddy is a one-year-old poodle Maltese mix. He and his owners and their 16-year-old daughter lost everything when their low-income apartment building burnt down four days after Christmas. A community resource directed them to our mobile health outreach in hope of getting food for Mac Daddy. We were able to get him up to date on his vaccines. We provided him food, a new bed, and a new squeaky toy. While Mac Daddy was having his veterinary health checkup, Mobile Health Outreach's resource navigator was able to provide his family with several social service assistance programs, one of which was able to secure housing for them. We gave them some clothes and snacks on site. We were also able to distribute gift cards so they could replace many of their lost items. We also provided them with two nights in a hotel to give shelter while they secured the apartment. Now Mac Daddy is back to living his best life in a new apartment with his family and his new favorite squeaky toy. Mac Daddy is a great example of how our program works. Almost half the people that come in to see the veterinarian actually request and accept social service and health referrals for their own needs. To summarize, almost 70% of people requested help with mental health issues and also reported food insecurity. These people were referred to food banks and other health providers. 42% requested assistance with housing, 28% with help for substance use disorder and 14% for fleeing domestic violence situations. Our resource navigator is able to connect these people with already existing resources on the ground. We are the connectors, the doorway through which people can enter care. Jessica's gonna tell you a little bit now about the harm reduction because that was a piece that we didn't envision initially, but it's proven very successful. Yes, this has been one way that we've been able to engage with the community and improve their health. Harm reduction requires us um, to hand out uh, supplies that um, help reduce disease like hep C, HIV, and deaths from overdose while people are using substances. We went from having no harm reduction kits to having four different kits that we hand out. And this has increased because of the need of the community. Um, these kits include single use items so that people are not sharing supplies and that the supplies are clean to begin with um, while they're using. The supplies also promote smoking over injecting as injecting tends to be more dangerous for the spread of disease. We also include fentanyl test strips um, as fentanyl has been in drugs lately and causing more overdoses and deaths as a result. We have also started handing out Narcan um, so that people can administer first aid to others as they notice that they're overdosing on uh, narcotics. Um, this has been something that the community has uh, requested and that our program has grown uh, over time, over the first year and now into the second year. Katherine will now talk about some of the other ways that we've been able to help the community um, through our medical team. As we engage with individuals by passing out harm reduction kits and other supplies such as hygiene products, we introduce ourselves as a medical team and offer our services. Mm -hmm. We have found our skills to be most needed for wound care. And as we take the time to clean and dress people's wounds, this often opens up the conversation about people's other health concerns, such as where they seek regular health care or what their feelings are about the COVID vaccination. As a result, we've been able to refer multiple people to various uh, other levels of care and also been able to help connect people to COVID vaccination. Multiple times we have identified urgent and emergent medical situations where we have been able to help people uh, identify which emergency room they felt comfortable attending and help to strategize and help people get the transportation that they needed in order to get there. We've learned that key points of our connection with individuals have been partnering with mutual aid organizations so that we can build on the shared trust that they have. And we've also found that a key goal has been that 
those we encounter have a positive experience interacting with the medical team. Thank you for joining us. And for more information about the work that we do, you can visit our website at seattlevet.org. Thank you.